there's really two types of data you can collect. You can collect stuff that has to do with numbers, and you can collect stuff that doesn't have to do with numbers. We have two kind of fancy sounded words for that. It really doesn't mean anything besides numbers and non-numbers, or numerical and non-numerical. It's called qualitative and quantitative. Which one do you think doesn't deal with numbers? Yeah, what's the key word in qualitative? Quality, like the quality of something. It doesn't have to do with numbers. It's just like hair color or uh, eye color. Give me something besides color. You said color twice. What else could it deal with? Do you think of something? Not everyone at once, you know. <laughs> Is the only thing on your mind colors now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll break the break the ice here again. How about um, if you ask someone whether they're Republican or Democrat? Is that numerical based? No. Yeah. Republicans are number one. Democrats are number two. Vice versa. Democrats are number one. That doesn't really make sense, right? They're they're not they're not numerical. You're either Republican or Democrat. Uh, so, or something else, independent, Green Party, whatever else they have on the pay attention. Give me something else that's qualitative and not quantitative. Ethnicity. I'm sorry? Ethnicity. Perfect. Someone else. Religion. Religion's a great one. Yeah, you can't put a, qual a quantity on religion or race, ethnicity. Anything else? I'm thinking of one more. There's typically only two of them. Gender. Gender. gender very. Uh, gender is is, uh, is something you can't really put a, a number on. You don't put a value or ascribe a number to gender or race or religion or democrat or sorry uh, political preference things like that. So we'll call that qualitative. You know, some books call it um, categorical as well. Like categories. So qualitative data, what we're talking about is data that is non-numeric. And I think you guys gave some great examples uh, we talked about, oh, what did I say, color? I heard gender, that was good. Uh, race, religion. Let me ask you for one more and let's see what you think about this, okay? What about, now we had all these things, what about zip code? Would that be qualitative or quantitative? What do you think? Qualitative. Now, it has numbers, but my question to you is, even though it has numbers, do those numbers mean something mathematical? For instance, if I take your zip code and your zip code and add it together, do I get someone else's zip code that's like, oh, this is relates somehow? Does that even make sense to do that? Does it make sense to multiply zip codes? How about divide zip codes? No, zip codes really are categorized the United States in, in sections. That's what zip codes do. Bigger numbers are towards the west, smaller numbers are towards the right. Uh, right, east, whatever that way is. Towards the east. That's how zip codes really work. So even though something might not have a number, or might have a number, I'm sorry, might have a number, it's not necessarily quantitative. A zip code is, has a number, but it's still qualitative. Here's the big key, right here. Qualitative data is data where mathematical operations are meaningless. You can't really do math with it. Do you guys get the point of that? You can't add them or subtract them or multiply them. But mathematical operations are meaningless. Okay, with that in mind, give me another thing, another piece of data, another type of data, or another 
item here that has numbers where math would be irrelevant to do on. Age. What now? Age. Well, age. If I took your age, and that was a good, good idea, but if I took your age and my age and I subtracted them, is that going to tell, tell you something about me and you? It's going to tell me that I'm older than you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, so age, not quite so much, but you're on the right track. Uh, someone else give me another one where you could subtract them, and it really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to do that. Area code. Yeah, area code. Or even phone number. Very good. Someone else give me something else. RD numbers. You what now? RD numbers. Great. Yeah, they all have numbers, but if you subtract them, you don't get someone else. It wouldn't even make sense to do that. Very good idea. Do you guys get the idea of qualitative or non-numeric or categorical data? Give me a little head nod if you do. Okay. So it's right here. Math operations don't make a whole lot of sense to do that. The other one, quantitative. What that means is it's numerical. So numerical data. And I'm guessing you can give me a whole lot of things that are numerical where you can subtract them and things make sense. Such as, I'll give you one, height. Height of people is numerical. Six feet, you're taller or shorter. If we subtract those, you're going to there's going to be some difference there, right, which is meaningful. It says, I am taller than you or shorter than you, depending on who you are. So something like uh, height would be quantitative data. Or weight. I'm talking about like pounds, not like um, light, medium, you know, something like that. Anything else you can think of? Come on, think of something. Give me something. Guys have jobs? Hopefully at these jobs you make wages. Wages. Cost per hour. Perfect. Somebody else give me one more, then we'll stop. We already have income, we have miles per hour, we have height, weight. What happens when you get up in the morning? Maybe you check the weather for this item. Temperature. 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 Yeah, temperature as far as degrees, right? Mm -hmm. If it's 98 versus 91, that difference in temperature tells you something, doesn't it? What time do you want? Sure, absolutely. Now, I don't like mean like time zones. morning, afternoon, night. What I mean, no. you mean like 3.30 versus 4.15. The difference between those is 45 minutes. We have something that that relates to. So, yeah, time's a great one. Good examples. Very good. And essentially, it's the opposite of this statement. Whereas mathematical operations are meaningless here, they are meaningful here. That's really the only difference. Math operations are meaningful. That's good for calculators. It shows those balls. <laughs> no, I'll never give you the right, wrong answer. They're too afraid. <laughs> Please, Keith, don't drop me again. I promise I won't do it. I won't answer. Now, within quantitative or numerical data, we do have a couple types of those. We have things that are discrete data, and we have things that are uh, continuous data. We've got to talk a little bit about that so you know the difference. So two types of quantitative data. types of quantitative, I'm abbreviating there, data. The first one we'll talk about is discrete data.
discrete data is what we call countable or finite. It means there's a certain number of them or you can count it. I'll explain that in just a bit. Countable or finite. The finite part means there's only a certain number of values you can pick from. The countable means you can count them. Let me give you an example. Um, if you were worked on like a chicken farm or something, maybe not a chicken farm, like an egg farm, do chickens pop out 3.2 eggs? I hope not. That'd be weird, man. Uh, no, they, they pop out like, oh, this chicken made one egg. This chicken made two eggs. This chicken made three eggs. The number of eggs that come out, you can count them. There's the first one, the second one, the third one. People go, oh, there's one. There's 1.34862 eggs. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That's like discrete data. It's countable. There, or, or there's a finite number of, of uh, things to pick from. Let me give you an example of that, like uh, on a die. You know, uh, not like... Die. Anyway, you roll, a, you roll a die, right? How many sides does a dice have? Seven. A die have. Can you get seven? Can you get eight on one die? Can you get four point three? No. There's only either one or two or three or four or five or six. There's only six choices. There's only a finite number of things you can choose from. Do you get that? Even if this now listen, this is going to blow your mind. But even if the six-sided die had something like one point four. And the other side had 2.6, and the other side had 3.184, would you still only be able to get six different numbers out of that? Yeah. That's what we mean by finite or, and or countable. Do you guys get that idea? You can count it, or there's only a certain number of things you can pick from. Yes, no? Yes, no? Yeah. So, like, number of eggs is an example here for the whole dice thing. Even if it wasn't numbered one through six, you could still only have six possible choices out of that. The other one is continuous data. By the way, I'm not the best speller, I'll admit that on tape uh, right now. So if I make a mistake, just feel free to let me know, okay? Those of you who had me before know what I'm talking about. Continuous data. Whereas a street is countable or finite, continuous is the opposite. It's, and I'll say it this way, there's an infinite number of possible values, and it's not countable. thinking of something like that, but I'll give you a real good example. This right here is usually a count of something. Like you're counting something. This one is usually a measurement. I'll explain that in a second. Usually a measurement. 